How you going? I'm Alex. This is Jake from Intense Off-Road. Today we're taking backyard mechanic back to basics doing an oil change on my ZD30 3 litre turbo diesel patrol. But before we get into it, I just want to take a moment and welcome on board our sponsor for the backyard mechanic series, Fulcrum Suspensions, the suspension specialists. So Fulcrum Suspensions have just launched their brand new website full of four wheel drive goodies for us to take a look at. If you follow the link down in the description for fulcrumsuspensions.com.au, you can check all that out and enter the promo code LAUNCH10, you'll get 10% off your shopping cart at the end of your purchase. So now that you know who they are, let's take a quick look at what you're going to need to do this job in the way of tools and supplies. So first of all, we've got to dress appropriately for the task at hand, right Jake? Oh dude, if, if you're not in a flano while you're doing backyard mechanics, it's yep. not, are you it's even not in backyard. your backyard? <laughs> you're not. <laughs> so you see Jake's got his long sleeve flano on, maximum safety there. We've got uh, jeans, nice dirty pair, obviously been in the workshop before. And of course, safeties, safety boots. You might want to cover those, those pretty bare hands if you're doing an oil change, because some of this stuff is going to be a little bit warm. Let's uh, start out with the very first part. It's optional, engine flush. <laughs> Here we go. Liquid Molly, engine flush plus. Um, why the brand Liquid Molly? Because it's German and we all know the best stuff comes from Germany, like Bratwurst and Steins. Rammstein. Rammstein. <laughs> all the best metal bands come from Germany. Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. Yeah. All from Germany, hence German oil flush. Yeah. Next thing. Oil. This was uh, recommended for the vehicle. 10W40 weight. Should be good for the ZD30 engine. Penrite, why Penrite? Because uh, it gets a pretty good rep. And according to the bottle, it's proudly Australian owned. So, and we can't like go wrong Australia. there. And we like Australia, we happen to live there. So that's our choice of oil. Now, I'm one of those people that doesn't agree with doing an oil change without doing a filter at the same time. The filter for this thing's damn expensive. It was like, 40 bucks for this. The GU uses a cartridge filter. I've never actually changed one of these before, but it's the same principle as doing a classic old spin-on filter. And the last thing, fiber washers. Um, if you get any oil leaks around your sump plug, this is probably the problem. You need to change your fiber washers. So that's a multi-pack to suit all sorts of applications. One of them's bound to fit my sump plug, I hope. Where do we begin? With the engine flush plus. Now, in the directions for use it says 300 mil is sufficient for up to five liters of engine oil. So we'll use the whole can of this. Uh, add to the used oil before the oil is changed. Start engine and let idle for 10 to 15 minutes, then completely drain. Change oil filter and fit sump plug, then refill with fresh oil. Not to be taken. All right, so keep that in mind. Good thing I paid for it and didn't just take it. <laughs> yeah. Ba -dum Tip the whole thing in. Let's not be precious. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> All right. Now we've got to run that for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, don't run your car for 10 to 15 minutes in the shed, people, all right? People die. I know you don't often hear about it, because they haven't lived to tell you about it. If you're going to be servicing your car in your shed, you want to put something under it. There's always going to be a few drops of oil getting everywhere. Now, if you can't do that, do it on your neighbour's lawn. Alright, 
Don't have a guard mask, so there's an old towel. Protect my sexy paintwork from my gangster ass belt. Now, down in here, you'll never be able to see it, but it's underneath the turbo is the oil filter casing. Uh, not sure if I can undo it by hand yet, but if you can't undo it by hand, there is a half inch square drive hole in the end of it. So the end of that ratchet will fit right in there. I quite like that. Thumbs up to you guys, Nissan. You don't need a um, proprietary oil filter remover or anything. Also, you're gonna need that half inch drive ratchet underneath and a 22 mil socket, and that's gonna get your sump plug off. So we'll start with the sump plug and drain this oil. We rolling. True story, had a cat once. Ate a bird. Dad wasn't too stoked, so done rammed a boot straight up his ass. Cat ran off never to be seen again, and we got left with a litter tray, with no other purpose than to now be my oil drain tray. It's a nice big oil tray. You want it to be plenty big enough. You don't want to go and buy a five litre oil tray for a car that takes 8.4 litres of oil. That's going to be a damn mess. So under we go with the kitty litter tray. There's our sump plug. There. 22 mil spanner. Ratchet, sorry. Get my damn tools right. Oh, Christ. Done got me flano dirty. Okay, and then we slide. Kitty litter tray. Now, this is going to be hot, and this oil will probably scold me. But I'm you a main. Gotta risk it for the biscuit, bro. Gotta risk it for the biscuit. I will be putting gloves on when I remove that oil filter, though. Oh, this is bullshit. Ugh. See what I mean about potential mess. So as you can see, a bit of a messy job. You might like to wear gloves. Nothing wrong with that. If you're precious about your skin, I'm not too precious. I'll just wipe this mess up with a rag. Clean up the sump plug. And I'll cast that aside. Oh no, my hand dripped on the concrete. Dad's gonna kill us. He's gonna make me scrub the toilet bowl with my tongue for a week. Mm -hmm. Riggers gloves are bloody awful for this type of job, but I've just realized too late that I don't have any mechanics gloves handy. I'm gonna wear gloves because when I touched that oil filter before, the filter alone was very hot, and it's right next to the turbo, which is obviously exhaust. Don't wanna lose my skin. Uh, the nature of this thing means I should probably grab a rag actually because when I take this off There's no way I can get a bucket or an ice cream tub under it like I usually do So I'm just gonna have to throw a rag under there to soak up the spill All right, I've got my ratchet in the end of the filter Yeah Oh mother of mercy Tight. Like Hercules worked on this thing last. Okay, let's try that. Oh, there it goes. Come on. Oh no. Look under the car. It's a bloody. This is why we use cardboard. Where's all this runoff going? No, it's just on the cardboard. Oh, God. <laughs> Get mom. <laughs> there it is, cartridge filter. So, without spilling too much oil, that would be the engine block. And this sits on the side there, so I've just unscrewed that. There's my old cartridge. It's all that runny oil we spilled everywhere. And then we're going to clean out this um, filter housing, dispose of this in an environmentally sensible manner, and put a new one in there. Rolling. Okay, there's the new filter to go in. As you'll see, it comes with a new O-ring there. That's important, don't forget that. We will re be replacing that guy there. Yeah. Beautiful mate. On an old spin-on type filter, you'd normally put a little bit of oil around the seal. I don't know if that applies to these cartridge type ones, but I'm going to do it anyway because it can't hurt. It's an influx of flies. 
Yeah, yeah. but. <laughs> That'll do it. Things have cooled down a little bit since we drained the oil. So, I don't need gloves to go back in here. This might be a little tricky, because you've got to find the thread. Yeah, I can't see it with the camera, eh? Nah. Just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to watch my face on the video. Then you'll see when I've got it. <laughs> so it took me a bit of jiggling around to try and get the thing back in its place. But it's threaded most of the way on now. And I've just got the ratchet in the end of it to finish off the job. How tight to do it is a tricky thing to say, really. If it leaks, but, tighten it again. Yeah, pretty much. But it's kind of, I've done it up and it's all of a sudden hit a stop. And I've just given it a little bit more than that. As you could see when I took it off, it was pretty tight anyway. Okay, filter's in. Uh, two more steps to go. Put a new washer on the sump plug and put that back in and then fill it up with oil. Here's our sump plug. It's got uh, two stacked fiber washers on it now. Had a copper washer on it before. That's what we got. That is ready to go back in the sump. Okay, sump plug back in. You want to be pretty careful not to drop it in this oil. The sump's actually still dripping a little bit. Finger tight. It's not the Challenger spaceship, it's not going to blow up if you don't do it up tight enough. So, just a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit more. Ooh, it feels pretty good. There's probably a, um, a torque specification for that, but we're backyard mechanics, not the jeep mechanics. We'll get away without it. What have I accomplished so far, Jake? Oil spills. <laughs> yeah, I have, that's true. <laughs> now, what are you probably going to want to do in order to get large quantity of oil into small hole, Jake? Get a funnel. Jake's getting the funnel ready to put the oil in. 8.4 litres of oil goes into this. Uh, what you probably want to do is put most of that bottle in and then you start checking the dipstick. So, I'm going to say we put 7 litres in. Then you crank the engine over, that's going to get the oil pumping through the system. The sump's going to be full, it's going to fill up the chamber for the oil filter and everything. Let that settle for a second, and then you go about the process of checking the dipstick. Not enough, put a little bit more in, check it again. Keep going until you've got the perfect level. Um, and it doesn't really matter what brand of oil you use, as long as it's the right viscosity. Especially with these newer motors. You really want the right viscosity. Shut up, dickhead. Remember the initial one doesn't count, so we'll wipe that clean. Yep, so there's nothing on that at the moment. It's right down at the tip. Woohoo! So there you go. That goes to show that it's not a true reading until you've run the engine. Okay. Oh, baby. Something about 8.4 litres of lube down a funnel will just make you feel good. Mm. Okay, now that the job's done, you're left with the cleanup. Uh, if you used all of the oil out of your bottle, which unfortunately I didn't, you can just drain it back into there and dispose of it the correct way. Uh, you can get rid of it at your local tip or the local parts store Super Cheap Auto actually has a waste oil bin, so I'll go and chuck mine in there. Also, I like to go over the engine bay with a can of degreaser, especially where I had that big leak when I took the oil filter off. Don't wash it down with water afterwards. Yep, you don't. No. Really? No. I always do. <laughs> anyway, you've achieved the job now. 
congratulations and thanks for watching this little tutorial. We'll be back with some more awesome backyard mechanic stuff in the not too distant future.